An arrest has been made in a firebomb attack at a California mosque. That fire broke out Friday afternoon. The blaze was contained and there were no injuries. The suspect in the arson attack has been charged with a hate crime. This incident comes as we are seeing an increase in anti-Muslim rhetoric in this country following the shootings in San Bernardino. Let's bring in Dr. Zudi Josser, the president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He is the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriots Fight to Save Save his faith. Dr. Josser, with a welcome to you, sir. I want to talk it's about great to be with you. I'm glad you're here. The the impact like that which we've seen in San Bernardino, what will that have on Muslims in this country? Well, I think Muslims are struggling for our identity. I think realizing that uh, the time for simple press releases to condemn acts of terror has gone. We need to do something. But certainly, we hope that America will stand with us, reformers, those that are the so There's only a solution, Alex, within the House of Islam. And if we're going to enable that, we need to empower Muslims to be not only part of the American fabric, but to realize that all of America, if it's going to have a long-term strategy, Muslims are going to lead that. And if they're going to lead that, we need to recognize that our founding fathers fought for religious liberty against theocracy. And if Muslims are going to do that, we can't allow bigotry against Muslims to dominate the conversation in America. You know, I was going to say in the wake of the San Bernardino shootings, um, the leader of a local mosque there in Riverside, I believe, called for the people at the mosque to do more, to volunteer in the community, to give back even more, which I thought was an extraordinary step. But let's talk about in the wake of the attack, uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump called for a, quote, complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. How have those comments affected the Muslims in America? Well, I think what's happening is uh, these types of comments, and actually both sides of the political spectrum have been using Muslims to basically score points. And we need tough love. One side is too much into the love about, you know, monolithic approaches to Islam. It's peaceful, doesn't need reform. The other side, sort of the Trump mantra now, is that all Muslims are monolithic. They're part of the problem. And what that does, Alex, it's complete surrender to the narrative of Islamism from ISIS, from Saudi Arabia, from Iran, from the Muslim Brotherhood, that they dominate what Islam is versus that America can be that solution that Muslims that are warriors for reform we have a Muslim reform movement that's bipartisan the Boston Globe just wrote an editorial about our work it is from Europe Canada America it's not about politics it's about uniting behind a declaration that we're against the caliphate we're against the Islamic State we're for the equality of men and women we recognize Alex that these are the root causes of radicalization and we can no longer as Muslims just say that we're against the act of terror but we have to look at the root causes. And as long as the narrative is dominated by folks without a strategy who are just about pandering, like Mr. Trump, or even the left, you know, with, with Hillary and, and not approaching it from within, we're going to not get to a long-term strategy in this problem. Mm. As you heard uh, coming into this segment, sir, we've been reporting on the surge in anti-Muslim violence here. What's been the reaction to these incidents? Well, I think ultimately we hope that Americans can begin to wake up to what we really are. Are we going to surrender to radicalism? And that's what happens if you start to alienate Muslims and, and act out this way. And I hope Muslim groups don't just simply fan the flames and start uh, putting the siege mentality on our community, but rather saying, hold on, the best way to ebb the tide of anti-Muslim bigotry is for us to not be victims, but lead the fight, wave the American flag, not a white flag of surrender to the Islamist narrative, but the American flag that liberty is the solution against theocracy in Iran and Saudi Arabia and the mm -hmm. Brotherhood, that the ISIS's of the world don't come out of thin air, let Americans see that we can, you know, satisfy that appetite that where's the moderate voices, and once they see that, the bigotry will melt away. You know, um, Hillary Clinton, as I'm sure you're aware, in response to Trump's comments last week, tweeted this. Here's the quote. Let's be clear, Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. But you have also been somewhat critical of Clinton's approach to Muslims in America. So what message do you think she should be sending? Well, I think, again, her message is monolithic. It doesn't allow us to recognize that Islam is in that time of history where we have to push back against theocracy. So I'd rather hear her say Islamists are the problem, but Muslims and Muslims who embrace the declaration of our reform movement are the ones that are part of the solution. So we can thread that needle just like our founding fathers did. And, and presidential candidates should 
project a strategy of what they're going to do in the long term, and she's not doing that. I mean, she's mentioned jihadists, so why not say the jihadists are the problem, Islamism and theocracy is the problem, but Muslims that believe in the Western experiment of universal human rights are the solution. So we can take sides within the House of Islam instead of lumping all of Islam as theocrats and we're not going to offend them, when in fact, when she does that, just as the Boston Globe pointed out, you alienate the very moderates that you need to fight this fight. Dr. Zudi Josser, many thanks for your time, sir. Much appreciated.